Okay guys, so today we are going to be taking a look at the Topps MSK versus the SE Zula 2. Now, as always guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It helps the channel out a ton, and shows that you guys support the project. Okay, so let's jump right into this. So this was a pretty interesting test, and as you guys probably are already aware, I'm not the largest fan of small bushcrafting and outdoor knives, but I did want to see the comparison of the Topps MSK versus the SE Azula 2, because these are two knives that are marketed to a very similar audience, people who want a strong, robust, full tang outdoor survival knife that's a neck knife that's small and compact. So I thought it'd be an interesting comparison to see these two kind of head to head and see you know, which one is the better of the tools. They're both similarly priced. They're both made out of 1095. The biggest difference between the two are that one is made in a Scandinavian grind and has a kind of more of a drop point and the other one is a little bit wider and it's a full flat grind. So let's talk about it. So with batoning, I have to say hands down, I think the SE Azula did a better job at batoning. And this is in part due to the fact that the SE Azula is slightly thicker of a knife overall, and the fact that the handle, or rather the knife, is overall larger. So you have, you know, your handle kind of starts right here officially, but when you're batoning and you're splitting wood, realistically the handle starts here. So you can baton wood that's just that little bit wider than with the Topps MSK, where the Topps MSK, you know, has a more true to form. Your handle starts here and, you know, the handle scale starts right there. So it really does kind of limit, you know, what you can actually baton with this knife pretty substantially. But once again, it also is hindered because it is a thinner blade. So not only is it shorter, but it is thinner as well. So it's kind of hindered in both regards. So the SE Azula 2 definitely did better, better in, that, in that way. Now the next test was uh, feather sticking, and feather sticking was actually pretty interesting for this one, at least in my opinion, using the two knives. Uh, I feel like the Topps MSK did a little bit of a better job when it came to feather sticking, and that uh, convex Scandi grind, or Scandi Vex grind, really land, lended its hand well to feather sticking, but the, I think that the SE Azula 2 did a better job overall with feather sticking because the biggest downside to the Topps MSK is the fact of its really small handle and whenever you try to use it to do things like feather sticking it becomes immediately apparent how little surface you have to actually hold on to your blade and try to do procedures like feather sticking. And uh, while I'd say that the blade itself was better at feather sticking than the Azula 2, the Azula 2 is definitely more repeatable and if you're going to be using a blade long term is definitely easier to feather stick with. So that was the feather sticking. Next we move on to notching and this is another thing or this is another test where very similar to the uh, feather sticking I think that the MSK did a better job with its grind and naturally you would expect something like a Scandinavian grind or a Scandivex to do a better job at, uh, at, at digging into wood and at notching and carving and such. But once again, that really small handle makes a big difference, and it's much harder to hold on to a blade for a long time and create the types of notches and create, you know, whatever carving you're trying to do with the wood because the handle is smaller, it's less ergonomic. And I think the other thing to notice is that because the MSK is made of thinner stock steel, as you can see, you know, it's a lot less wide, and especially at its thinnest point here, there's very little steel. So when you're actually holding this blade, it really, especially with gloved hands, barely feels like you're holding anything. And uh, that leads to a lot of uh, rotation of the blade in your hand, and it leads to just very poor grip. Like, it's very hard to actually hang on to the blade because there's really nothing to hang on to. 
So in this test, I really found that, you know, the MSK has a great blade for cutting. The, uh, the grind is excellent, but it's just ergonomically a very challenged knife. It's very hard to, uh, you know, carve and do stuff with the blade because you're battling with this uh, handle that's just very unergonomic. And uh, that's the thing that I do like about the Azula is it's a little bit wider handle and even though you know the handle length isn't too much longer than the um, MSK maybe you know like about a half inch longer which I guess maybe is you know it's just that little bit longer so you can get a proper forefinger grip and the width of the blade stock is just that so that you really feel it's a small blade of course you know you feel that it's small but you still feel like you have a firm full grip on the blade and it's really hard to uh, explain without you know someone using it how big of a difference that actually does make uh, in the use of this blade. So the last part was throwing ferro rod sparks. Now I will say both of these knives do not excel at throwing ferro rod sparks unless modified and I have gone ahead and modified the MSK and I have flattened the spine there as you guys can probably see. Um, to accommodate for throwing sparks off the back. I have to do the same with the SC Azula, but both blades will throw sparks off their spine once they're modified for it, but neither will from factory throw sparks off the spine. So take that for what you will. It is, especially because these are smaller knives, a very easy, very fast process. You literally just throw your knife in a vise, take you know a Dremel or some sandpaper, and just knock that spine down to a, a nice sharp angle. And uh, both of these blades will throw ferro rod sparks just fine. That's basically my experience with the Topps MSK versus the SC Azula 2. Neither are my go-to blade for outdoor knives. I've said in previous videos that I actually prefer, you know, going with a folder if I'm going with a smaller blade for the wilderness because I think you get more ease of carry and useful edge out of a folder, something like a uh, Benchmade Bug Out is my preferred uh, for smaller knives, but if I had to choose between these two, the SC Azula 2 would definitely be uh, my preferred one, just because the handle is more hand filling, and I feel like if I have to sit down and carve something out or feather stick a piece of wood, you know, um, I'm going to be able to do it comfortably and reliably with the SC Azula 2. So even though the blade grind on the MSK is superior in my opinion, you know, the handle and the ergonomics just really are lacking. So anyways guys, that's all for now. God bless and I'm out.